the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Answer every question in the Scripture. You know I've told you that many times. Every question, even ones that seem like they're not directed to you, answer the question. So I've got a question for you. A question that came up in the reading today. A very important question. Why reason ye the, the excuse me, sorry. Why reason ye the, these things in your hearts? Why are you thinking that stuff? That's what Jesus Christ was saying to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the ruling elite, who saw a paralytic. They didn't care about the paralytic. They didn't really care about the effort that those who loved the paralytic had taken to literally take down the roof so that they could lower the paralytic in the midst of Jesus. They didn't care about any of that. They cared that the Lord had said, Thy sins are forgiven thee. And then there are all this reason in their hearts. Now we could talk about that specifically in the context of how the Lord knows the heart, etc. And how the Pharisees were full of such evil in their hearts. But I would prefer right now to talk to you about what just sort of hit me when I read this. Because that's basically what I do to prepare for sermons. Is I read and I circle stuff. Or underline stuff or put chevrons around it, or I never know what I'm going to do until I do it. We're captives to our thoughts. We're like the paralytic. We're palsy. Our thoughts are often just so bad, aren't they? Sometimes they're really about terrible things. Sometimes they're just empty. Sometimes we're just lazy. Sometimes we just have a recurring thought about someone that bothers us because we're angry about them or remember wrongs or something else. Our thoughts are keep us in captivity. Every single one of us should know that. Your thoughts keep you in captivity. What a terrible thing. What a terrible thing. So how do we answer the question, why do you reason these things in your hearts? Well... I think the way the Lord answers questions is usually not by just answering the question or sometimes by sort of ignoring the question, but really answering the, the reason for the question or how to heal the person who asked the question. So that's what I think we should, how we should answer this question. We don't really know sometimes why we think the things we think. I mean, it's like the wind. Do we know how the wind blows? It just does. And sometimes our thoughts just go this way and they go that way, and it's just horrible. We can't control them. And we are our thoughts. The things we think, that's, that's the person we are. Because you think things and then you do them. Now, many times we think and we don't, we think we're not doing, but actually we are. We're becoming that thought. So if we think bad thoughts, if we think judgmental thoughts, if we think lustful thoughts, if we think uh, ambitious thoughts, prideful thoughts, that's the person we are. Doesn't matter what else we say about ourselves. Doesn't matter if we read the entire Psalter every night. If we have those kinds of thoughts, that's the person we are. And what a terrible thing it is to be that person, even a little bit, because that's not what we were born for. We were born to have perfect thoughts, to always be at peace, to have power within ourselves to always think correctly. Not to force ourselves to think correctly, but just to think correctly. That's freedom. That's the freedom that's talked about in the second gospel reading. We're celebrating St. Gregory Palamas. Great father. His sermons are amazing. He was so learned, and yet he writes in a simple way that can be understood. And... He is known about the one who is the Hesychist, who taught us about that our destiny is to see the uncreated light, the energy of God. This is for everyone. That the grace of God flows freely to us and we can see this grace, this uncreated light. But it ha only happens when we control our thoughts. So you could think of St. Gregory as teaching about the uncreated light, but really, first and foremost, his teaching is about thoughts. 
Just like all of the saints, it's all about thoughts, about how to think correctly. If you think correctly, you will do correctly. You will live correctly. You will have a beautiful life if you think correctly. And you will, if you don't think correctly, your life will be terrible. It doesn't matter if you're rich or famous or healthy or have things that you want. If your thoughts are not good, then you don't have a good life. And may it be, may God grant you the grace that if you don't have those good thoughts, that you're aware of that. So that you don't let material things or other such things make you unaware of how destitute you really are. So when this paralytic was brought down to Jesus, the Pharisees couldn't control their thoughts. Of course, they, were, they had evil in their hearts. And perhaps we don't always have this kind of evil in our hearts. Let's not pretend, let's not be falsely humble and say we're just as evil as the Pharisees. They were thinking murderous thoughts, terrible thoughts. But we have enough evil, don't we? <laughs> Plenty of evil. And we don't control it because we're palsied, because we're like that paralytic and we need healing. So. What I would suggest is that we should tear down the roof to have good thoughts. So I would suggest we should pray things like, Oh Lord, help me to have good thoughts. Don't say, grant me good thoughts. I don't like prayers like that, really. I don't like saying, God, give me this. I would prefer that, that I say or that you say, God, help me to have this. Because after all, it is a partnership. Now, we're only a very small, tiny part of the partnership. Just a, a tiny, 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 tiny billionth of effort. You can't even put it in, in numerical terms. And the, God's grace fills the rest. But it is a partnership. And God respects that partnership. God respects our free will because he gave it to us because he has free will. So we must struggle so if you have bad thoughts and you just say, God, give me good thoughts, but you don't do anything about, your good, about having good thoughts, then you know what? You're not going to get good thoughts. It's not going to happen. Because you're, you're not tearing down the roof. You're not lowering yourself in the presence of the Lord. But if you say, God, help me to have good thoughts with a prostration, with your head on the ground, maybe you do 10 or 100. St. Seraphim did thousands. And he went on a rock for a thousand days and a thousand nights. And he said, oh, Lord, enlighten my darkness. That's exactly the same prayer. Help me to have good thoughts. I've got darkness in me. I want to get rid of it so that I only have light. If you only have light, then you only have good thoughts. You only have God. And everything is perfect and tranquil. Externally, things might not be tranquil, but in the heart, you're tranquil. That's all that really matters. I want to talk to you about a dangerous topic, but I think pastors should talk about this topic. Just like we talked about COVID quite a bit, we should talk about this terrible war that's happening. Now, as a pastor, we try, at least I try, a good pastor, even a bad one like me, tries to be apolitical when we speak about things that are political goings on. Because when you're talking to people, it's very easy for people to take the smallest word and make it political and say, you favor this, or you are against that. And so it's a dangerous topic, because many of you are extremely emotionally invested, because you have loved ones in Ukraine, or loved ones in Russia, perhaps, that are, that are in the war. And who knows if the war might not spread to Russia. Very easily could. So others of us, we don't have a person that we from our family in, in Ukraine or Russia, but perhaps we've been there, or perhaps we have a great love for orthodoxy, or perhaps we just can't stand the idea of there being orphans made every day, and people maimed and killed, and something worse. There's something worse than that. I hope you understand there's something worse than that. People with thoughts that are ugly and terrible, and they might not recover from those thoughts. A person could lose an eye or a leg, and they could recover from that. And in the next life, they'll have an eye, perfect eyes, perfect legs, perfect life, perfect thoughts. 
But if a person has bad thoughts, anger, and murderous ideas, and, and rage against whomever you want to rage against, it's always a sin to rage against anybody. Anybody. So to make it personal, anybody on the side, whichever side of the war there is, and by the way, there's a lot more than two sides. If you rage against anybody, that's a sin. If you wish anybody to be dead, that's a sin. If you have remembrance of wrongs in your heart, that is making you a paralytic. And as a pastor, my heart goes out especially to the suffering that will continue to suffer for years after this war. Years and years, until their death, they'll suffer because of their anger and because of judgment and because of grief that they, they, they don't deal well with. I know something about grief. If you don't do something about grief, it eats you up. If you do, don't do something about anger, it eats you up. All of these hot sins Anger, lust, remembering wrongs, grief, all of them. If you don't do something to change the way you think, it will eat you alive. And you'll really be dead. You'll be walking around looking like you're alive, but inside you're dead. We don't want that. So the greatest evil of any war is that there will be people who will be so affected by this that they'll never, ever recover. Some that, that will die, they'll go to paradise. So for them, that won't be an evil. It'll be an evil for the family. They'll miss their loved one. It'll be a terrible thing. But the greatest evil is when people have deadness in their hearts. That's the greatest evil. It's when the heart is dead. And we must strive to have a heart that is alive, that is flesh, that feels that knows the truth about things and that does not be filled with anger or resentment or all the other sins that just consume us. And a war is a fertile field for creating those sins. So I hope that you haven't thought that I've been political in speaking about this war. You can have any politics you want, but if you hate, you are not a Christian. If you wish someone to be dead, you're not a Christian. If there's a continual fomenting and anger in you, you read a news article and you're angry, and you read another one and you're angry, etc., then you're in great peril because those news articles are going to continue. And until something happens, death is going to continue in Ukraine. No matter what you say, no matter how many people you think are right or wrong, is going to continue. So what do we do about this? Well, first you have to start with yourself, because that's where the greatest war is. I talked about that last week. The greatest war that you encounter in your life is your heart, because your heart wants to be inclined to things that are not good. And you're useless when you're doing things that are not good, when you're thinking things that are not good. You're useless. And you're dying when you're doing that. So we have to fight that war. And here we have an image of the roof. And they couldn't get through the door because there were too many people. So they didn't give up. They went up and they broke through the roof. Roofs were made in such a way with thatch that this was an easy enough thing to do. And they lowered the paralytic in the midst of our ward. So that's what you got to be doing. you got to be the paralytic and the one who breaks the roof. And the one who does the lowering. The, all of it. And then you've got to beg the Lord, Lord, help me to have good thoughts. Lord, forgive me of my resentment. Lord, I'm so lazy. I sometimes don't even know why. How can this be? Help me not to be lazy. Don't say, make, don't make, make me not be lazy. Don't say that. Because the Lord did not go to the top of the roof. He didn't heal the paralytic when he was on the roof. He knew they were on the roof. He waited for them to break the roof and bring the paralytic down. So that's what you got to be doing in order to have healing and struggle to have these good thoughts because good thoughts are salvation. Without good thoughts, we're dead. So we have this terrible, terrible crime that's happening. People are being killed. 
All kinds of terrible things are happening. The crime is not who's making war against whom. It is just that there's carnage happening. There's, there's evil happening. This is not the way life is supposed to be. Whether it's in Ukraine or whether it's in Uganda, they recently had some unrest. Whether it's in North Korea, whether it's wherever it is. There's always war and there's always man being extremely inhumane to other men and women and children. It's always happening. Now we shouldn't say, well, since it's always happening, you know, we just go on with our day. Not at all. But you must fight the most important war first, your own thoughts. And then you should be doing something about this war. You should be doing prostrations because of this war or praying the Saint prayer to St. Vladimir as our bishop suggested. Metropolitan Anufri has uh, asked all of his faithful and you can consider yourself among his faithful if you want. He's a very holy, good man. He's asked his faithful to read one uh, gospel, re you know, chapter from the gospel every day and then to do three prostrations for peace. That would be a good thing to do. Three or 30 or 300, whatever you're able to do. But when you do those prostrations, let it be that your heart is clear and that's not full of angry thoughts about who is the villain and who are the, uh, who are the innocent and all that. Because that's just political. Just go find that stuff on the political channels. It doesn't save anybody. What saves is if we and collectively all of us beseech the mercy of God that somehow, despite our unworthiness, that the killing would cease. And not only the killing would cease now, but it would also not happen in the future. That there would actually be peace. Of course, we're asking for something that only will be fully realized in the next life because we'll always have wars. That doesn't mean we shouldn't fight against them. It doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, write letters and say we should stop immediately having uh, hostilities. But the most important war is to fight is the hostilities that you have. And you got plenty of them. And the way I know that you got plenty of them, even people that, there's a few people I, don't, I haven't met here, I know you got them too. Because you're a human being, and I know a little something about be human beings. Number one, I am one, and I suffer that human condition. Number two, I hear a lot of people talk about their troubles. And you know what? <laughs> We're all the same. We all got about the same troubles. Maybe in the specifics, things are a little bit different, but basically we got the same troubles. And every single one of us, our biggest trouble, if you can say that, or one of our big troubles is we just don't know how to think right. We don't know how to control the way we think and to value the right things and to just stop ourselves from going the wrong direction in our thoughts, having our thoughts just be this tumbling, terrible, chaotic mess. Everybody, every one of us has those problems. Well, well, maybe not him yet, huh? Maybe not him, huh? Have you noticed that when a baby smiles, their whole face smiles, doesn't it? Yeah. When he smiles, all he's thinking about is what he's smiling about. Wouldn't that be nice that you could smile and think about nothing else? Huh? Wouldn't that? Wouldn't that be beautiful to just have God and nothing else and not struggle with, with whatever things you struggle with, the, the two dozen different major problems that you have, and they're all based on thought, every single one of them. If you look carefully, every single one of them based on thought, every single one of them, every single one. So what are we going to do? We're going to break down the roof is what we're going to do. This is great land, great time to be breaking down the roof by doing all the things I tell you about. I've already mentioned prostrations, right? Nobody's ever going to win that bet that I'm not going to say prostration in a sermon. Every single sermon I talk about prostrations because they're so important and all the rest. But you have to struggle with your, yourself first. Don't look out at this and say, that's terrible what they're doing. Well, okay, yeah, I agree with you. It's terrible what's happening. But what about inside? When you look at the mirror, is there anything terrible happening? 
Don't you want that terrible stuff to go away? It can and it will, absolutely. We can go in and out and find pasture. We can have freedom. That's from the second gospel. We're free from our, 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 th our, our thoughts so that we can have good thoughts and then we can do good things and we can be at peace. Remember that the first thing that the Lord said when he saw the, the gathered 11 in the upper room was peace be with you. So we say it a ton in the divine liturgy and in other services. It's really important. It's not a throwaway phrase. It is salvation to have peace in your heart. Because if you have peace in your heart, then guaranteed the only thing that is in your heart, the only one who is in your heart is God. There's no darkness. There's no hate. There's no coldness. There's no bad thoughts. There's only good thoughts. What a blessed thing to have good thoughts. But you got to work for it. You got to work for it whether there's a war going on or whether whatever the next thing that happens. There'll be a next thing. The media will go crazy about that thing. There'll be a thousand self-appointed experts about that thing. That none of, basically none of them will be telling the truth because none of them will be talking about the inner war that we have with ourselves. None of them are talking about that. They're always talking about the war with other people. The biggest war that you fight is the war with yourself. And if you fight that war, then God bless you. You're going to win. Absolutely, you're going to win. And you'll no longer be a paralytic. You'll be able to stand up. And you'll be able to do what you should do. What you know in your heart you should do. The only thing that brings you happiness. You'll be able to do those things because you'll be free. And that day will be free indeed. Free to have good thoughts. And God bless you. Amen.